everyone and welcome back to my channel. Right, this week is a pastel drawing and these are my pastel pencils. They're made again by Faber-Castell and this set cost around about £90 I think. So again it is a professional set and they are called Art and Graphic Pit Pastel pen uh, Pencils. Now, apart from the pencils, I also use pastels in sticks, which I keep them in this art bin because it protects them very well because they, they are very brittle and they break really easily. So this art bin actually has three layers, but as you'll see, I only actually use two of them. So the top layer has all my flesh colored and a few yellows and reds and then the next layer down can, carries on with the reds into pinks and then into purples and blues and greens and as you see there's nothing on the bottom layer. So I only have quite a limited supply of these and I've had these since I did A levels which must be over 50 years ago. <laughs> well no about 50. So giving my age away there. Right, the paper I'm using is a De La Rowney paper. It's £90 in weight and it is called Angre paper, which is spelt I-N-G-R-E-S after Jean-Auguste Angre, who worked in the 18th and 19th centuries. Now we're using the same picture and the same tracing again. So I haven't put any more uh, graphite on the back of this tracing. It's still as we did it however many weeks ago. I'm going to stick down the tracing to it from moving and then go over it and I'm not going to bother to show you all that. Now these are pastel blenders or the paper ones are tortillon. I don't tend to use the paper ones much because I find them quite annoying but I do use these pastel shapers which come in a variety of different sizes. These were quite expensive because I think they'd only just come on the market when I bought these quite a few years ago. And they have a nylon tip and they come in firm, medium and soft tips with a variety of different shapes. They are quite expensive, but you can get um, a cheaper version which are $2.99 for four, at least were, these were when I bought them, from um, the works. Now this stage I always call my scary stage because this is the stage that it looks terrible. The sketch looked all right and then I put this coat over the top. And this was the stage where my kids used to say, oh mum, you've ruined it. <laughs> But I promise you, it will gradually build up and will evolve from the scary stage into something that does resemble a human being. And I must tell you that no book I've ever read does it this way and nobody else that I've ever seen doing pastels does it this way. So this is just my way of doing it. So you might not want to follow it. It's just the way I have evolved over the years. Gradually I'm putting in more and more shading and it kind of sculpts the drawing which I think is what I love so much about pastels and because they blend so easily into each other you can smudge with your finger or with one of these pencil shapers and it's just magic. When I first started out selling pictures, it was always just portraits and, and I did them in pastels. And then I kind of branched out and started doing them in pencil as well. And then when I lived in Naples, a lady that I used to exhibit with, she said, you really need to start doing some landscapes, Carrie. Just try it out. So I did, and I'd had a very good teacher when I lived in America who taught me to do watercolor. I never learned to do watercolor when I was at college, which 
I found very annoying because I desperately wanted to learn to do watercolour. But then I had this marvellous teacher in America and she gave me confidence. And then in Naples, I started doing portraits of people's houses. And from then on, I've started doing landscapes as well as portraits. Portraits will always be my favourites and my first love. Just doing the mouth here and the lips. And just keep building up the colour just like you would with any other medium. And here are the eyes. I used to leave the eyes until last because they're my favourite bit. And if I did them first, then I kind of wouldn't do the clothing. But now I kind of know I'm going to do the clothing and I do do the eyes at the same time as I do the face. And it really just makes your whole drawing come alive and gives it a personality once you do the eyes. Now you'll notice that normally I work from the top down and that today I haven't. I haven't done the hair, so I'm doing his face first. Now, you can think, why is that? Well, it's because pastels smudge very easily and the hair is almost black. So, I am leaving that until I finish the face and then I will come back and do the hair because I don't want it to smudge powder black chalk powder into the face. So just doing details on the ears there. And then coming down doing the chin and the neck. And if you remember, I mentioned a few weeks ago about the fact that the chin makes a shadow on the neck and the shadow is the thing that kind of makes the chin come forward and the neck go back or give the illusion of that. Now coming in and just putting a basic white coat for his collar and when I've done the white coat, I'll then add some shadows to it and then start to put in the coloured illustrations on his shirt. So this is a different procedure to watercolour or coloured pencils or even pencil itself because in all of those, for white, we had the white of the paper. So we weren't adding white, we were using the paper as the white. Whereas with pastels, I don't use a white paper, I use a coloured paper and then use the pastel itself to make the white. And pastel sticks come in different hardnesses, a bit like pencils where you get the HB and then the 2B and 4B and 6B. So you, you get softer pastels and harder ones. The soft pastels wear down really fast and they also break very easily. Now the pastels that I showed you in stick form and I said I've had them since I was doing my A-levels, that doesn't account for all of them. I have at different stages in my career bought new ones, obviously, and um, I, but I do have a few of those original ones in colours that I hardly ever use and I've bought lots and lots of different makes but still my favourite is the Faber-Castell ones so that is one of my favourite brands for certain products my favourite brand for watercolours is Winsor & Newton and my favourite brand for brushes when I can afford them is probably Da Vinci. Those are Kalinsky Pure Sable brushes and they are beautiful. 
I do find that sable brushes wear out quickly and they are extremely expensive, but they are my favourites. Right, back to the pastel and I'm now doing his shirt sleeve. Again, adding the white, but also reserving where I have drawn in the illustration so that I don't lose that completely and have to redraw it all. Now normally when I draw a pastel drawing I wouldn't draw it in graphite pencil the outlines. Um, a bit like when I was doing the pence, coloured pencil drawing last week I said that I don't use graphite pencil to do the outline I would use a coloured pencil. Well in this case I would use a pastel pencil to do my outlines for the same reason you don't want graphite powder to get into the face of your drawing because that will add grey to the skin tones so you have to be really careful so I did it quite lightly when I did it this time and it seems to have worked but I, I would never normally draw the outlines with a lead pencil. I'm just doing his arms and the shadow on the shirt to make the the back of the shirt sleeve which is in shadow go recede and his other arm that there's not a lot of detail there because that is not what you want people to look at you want people to be drawn to the face So rather than putting the black in, the black stripes, I'm going to put all the white stripes in first and then come back and do the black stripes afterwards for the same reason that I haven't done the hair in that I don't want the black smudging in. So it's important to do the white first and then do the black, not the other way around. Now, being right-handed, I should have really started on the left-hand side and worked across so that I'm not smudging it. So that's why I've put the piece of tissue there to stop myself, my hand, from smudging what I've already drawn. Now coming in and doing the hair. Now just like with the watercolour and the colour pencil, I'm doing blue first and then brown. And then I'll come over and do the black but also trying to be very careful not to get any of the blue brown or black onto his face so I keep blowing I'm always blowing when I do um, pastel drawings I am forever sort of <laughs> blowing away the dust and also keep washing my hands because if I've smudged in the black I don't then want to go and smudge something on his face or his skin or the white so immediately afterwards I'll go and wash my hands so that I don't smudge black into everything else. Now so that this doesn't smudge into the rest of the face I am going to spray it. Now I sprayed it a bit too much and you can see just on the right hand side there is a stain from the spray and that won't dry out. I did wait before I went back into the painting to um, for it to dry before I started drawing again but you can see a mark there so you have to be really careful. And I do find that when I spray whites, they kind of all coagulate together and you lose something in the whites. So I don't really like spraying white or just a very, very thin coat. So here I'm doing, starting at the top with the black for his stripes so that I don't smudge them and then coming downwards and then doing the stripes on the bib. Just putting a few little shadings in 
that will really be shadings in the white to show the creases and also the white of the little badge that's on his pocket. Now I've covered up the face so I don't get any of that black dust onto his face. And here I'm starting on the left hand side because I'm right handed so that I don't go over and smudge all these stripes, these black stripes into the rest of the drawing. And they're only having one coat. But I do have to keep resharpening my pencil throughout this. So I do find that there are certain pencils in my box that I have to continually renew. And you can buy them singly, so that's not a problem. Going back to papers, there is one paper that I really love to use, which I use for my portrait commissions. And it's made by a company called Sennelier, which is based near Roscoff in France. I've seen their factory. And they make beautiful papers. It's got like a sandpaper finish, and it really holds the pastel dust to the paper. They also make pastels but I haven't ever tried their pastels. I think they're very soft and I think one day I'll have to have a go. And these by the way are chalk pastels, they're not oil pastels. I don't use oil pastels at all. I have tried them but I didn't like them. I just found I couldn't blend them in the same way. So I think it would take a different technique if I was using those. Coming in and just putting the, the stitching, the highlights of the stitching on his bib. So we are coming to the end of this drawing and as usual I will show you a picture of this drawing as it's finished and then compare it to the others that I've done, the other four. And next week I will be doing the one that's way out of my comfort zone, my first ever attempt at doing acrylics. So please bear with me as I find this quite scary. So we'll see if that is a total disaster or if I can produce something that is reasonable. So here's the finished picture. And as always, stay safe, stay well. See you next week, bye.